Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the uh, Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake Public Meeting of Council as required under the Pan Planning Act uh, of February the 27th, 2018. Uh, we'll start the meeting with the approval of the agenda, please. It's moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Barker. The Council approves the agenda for its public meeting of February 27th, 2018, as presented. All in favor? That's carried. Is there any declaration of pecuniary interest? None declared. Uh, I've been advised, uh, <clears throat> I am going to declare a, uh, uh, a declaration of pecuniary interest uh, on the February the 6th special meeting, which was uh, a rezoning of property on George and Queen. And uh, even though I didn't attend the meeting, I, I was absent, I, I have been advised by the clerk that the proper thing to do would uh, to declare it after the fact. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, petitions and delegations. Uh, Ashley, you're going to speak on the uh, official plan amendment number one and zoning application number 25. Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to remind everyone to, if you haven't already, make sure you use the sign-in sheet so that you can ensure you get proper notification of the decision that's made. Uh, next week at Council. So if you haven't already, please fill in your name, address, and phone number so we can get a hold of you if necessary. So this, um, this application is a joint official plan amendment and a zoning bylaw amendment, and it's located on the Kale Gold property. Uh, it's just west of 1360 Government Road West. They're proposing to uh, amend the official plan for the purpose of redesignating this one piece of property from residential to industrial. And they're also proposing to Redesignate, or sorry, rezone the lands below um, as uh, to rural, from rural to mineral extraction and mineral disposition to accommodate a new shaft. Uh, other other things that have come up are to recognize the existing use of the property as a mine. Uh, they're they're also requesting as part of this rezoning to reduce the setback for that shaft from 100 meters to the proposed 33 meters. They are also intending to construct auxiliary structures on the property to accommodate the new shaft. They are proposing to establish an area for the disposition of mine tailings and to an establish an area for a pit and quarry. So just to sort of give us some reference, I did include this in the notice that was circulated to the residents and to various ministries. So we've got the mine shaft being located right on the Highway 66, the proposed ancillary structures on that piece to the north, the proposed tailing sites identified in black, and the proposed pit and quarry, which is in the hatched area. So in terms of the provincial policy statement and um, policy or, uh, planning support for this project, I'm not going to read all this. As you can see, there's, there's quite a bit of uh, supportive policy that would allow us to continue with this, uh, this application. There is concern about the environmental impact, which I will get to as part of the official plan. Growth plan for Northern Ontario, again, there was no issues here. Uh, it was actually a great example of fitting perfectly into a Northern Growth Plan opportunity. The official plan, the designations, as I'd previously mentioned, they're rural in, for most part, except for that one piece of property that's residential. So in order to allow ancillary structures on that piece, uh, we do have to go through this official plan amendment in order to change the designation to industrial. My, the official plan that was done in 2015 actually does stipulate when a new mine or proposed new activity is taking place for mines. Uh, we have to go through a zoning bylaw amendment, which is why we're here today and that we have to ensure that there's the stakeholders in the cons consultation for the comprehensive closure process the mineral projects, which we have, Joanne, received, and we are going to be going through that and providing comment if necessary. The big one is to make sure that we um, are following the MOACCD series guidelines. So what we did was we had Kale Gold Commission an air quality and noise compatibility study, and that was done by Novus Environmental down south. Uh, as part of this process and to ensure the, uh, the safety and the, the health and of our residents, we, we had the study peer reviewed at the cost of Kale Gold. So we actually went through a process and hired O2E uh, to do that. So we have received correspondence as of this morning that both environmental firms are satisfied with the dispersion models that were established for this development and that there are no concerns from an environmental standpoint. So that's looking at air quality, noise, and dust. Um, there was absolutely no concerns raised by either company. Further to that, I wanted to sort of 
get an idea of what happens after the fact. So in the study itself, it actually recommended that certain design criteria be used in order to ensure that they met those guidelines. So my question was whether or not the municipality had to play some sort of enforcement role to ensure that that happened and the design criteria were followed. Um, we don't, the MOACC actually takes over from here. They have what's called a noise abatement action plan. They already, Kale Gold already has one, but they will have to amend it and have to bring those uh, design qualities or design guidelines into play. So anything that was recommended in the report will actually likely be recommended in the noise abatement action plan and they'll have to put in through that to make sure that they're meeting those MOACC guidelines. Uh, in terms of the mining claim L1617, that's that one piece that needs to be modified from residential to industrial. It is located within the urban service area, so there is a, a need for that property to be connected to municipal services, and that's something we are going to be looking at with Kale Gould in the coming weeks on how we can accommodate that request. So in terms of their compliance with the provincial policy legislation, uh, the official plan, it met those requirements. They went through the proper studies. They, they sh they've shown us uh, ample proof that they're gonna be able to meet those MOACC guidelines and provincial policy and the growth plan for Northern Ontario, there was no concerns. In terms of the zoning bylaw, uh, we did end up recognizing uh, late in the game that we have a zone that's actually set up for mineral extraction and mineral disposition, or disposition together. So instead of actually going ahead and rezoning this property from, to, from rural to mineral extraction and then mineral disposal based on where they wanna put their tailings versus extracting stuff from the ground, we actually figured we'll rezone the entire property to allow for mineral extraction and disposal and that's just giving them further freedom to be able to do what they want on that piece of property. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden they can put a new shaft in without coming to talk to us. They would have to amend their closure plan and we'd still have that communication happen through that plan. So it doesn't mean that they get a free-for-all and they can do what they want on the piece of property without involving us. We still have that say within the closure plan. It just means no public process through the Planning Act. So part of the request, as I'd mentioned previously too, is that we are trying to reduce that 100 meter setback to 33 meters to accommodate the location of the shaft and the ancillary structures. So in terms of a summary, we did go through and do a GIS assessment and identified that the expected areas to be developed are outside of any natural heritage areas, so any type of environmental um, deer wintering areas, wetlands, they actually skirted all of the environmentally significant areas in town, so that's good news. We do know that Kale Gold will be dealing with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change, and the Ministry of Northern Development and Mines uh, through their closure, pro their closure plan process. We'll also be dealing with MOACC with their noise abatement program. The shaft is proposed to be located approximately 33 meters from Highway 66. Uh, and that was um, an estimate that we put in. Uh, we're hoping that it's, it's suitable enough. I think that they are intending to do a survey, so we, we may see that come back as a little less, and if it does, we'd have to go through a minor variance process later. Either way, the study is, I, I do want to emphasize that the study is based on where, it, the, where the shaft is going. So I'm, I'm saying it's 33 meters from the highway, but a survey may show that it's actually less. The study took into account where it's actually going. So it, whether it's 20 meters or 33 meters, the study took it into account. The, our 100 meter buffer that we have in our zoning bylaws, so that setback that's there, is to provide enough of a buffer to limit visibility, noise, dust, and odor that may result from the extraction of ore. So shaft itself at its nearest receptor is approximately 175 meters away. And that study, this is where I'm saying it has identified that the shaft would not impact surrounding property owners being 175 meters away. The reduction to the setback in this case should not impact surrounding property owners. I am recommending, uh, it, is, it is a requirement in our bylaw that they go through a site plan control agreement. And so as part of this process, I do want to see the fugitive dust and the best management practice plan uh, as referenced at least in the site plan control agreement to ensure that it's there. Uh, and then we can reference to it as well and, and enforce it from a municipal standpoint if we need to. And the specifications provided for the cable openings and heated intake fans, I'd like to see that referenced as well as your recommendations from the uh, studies that were done by Novus Environmental. In terms of correspondence received, these are just um, the people that had contacted us prior to this public meeting. So we had Eric Marion call and they were more concerned about the closure of Goldthorpe Road, which we've confirmed is not going to close. Public access will still be allowed through that area. 
Uh, Kevin Parle actually approached me at the open house. Uh, he was concerned about the impact on his property and wanted to know the exact distance from his home. There was also slight concerns about blasting, which I can have um, the Kale Gold representatives speak about if there's concerns about that. Uh, Jean-François Vachon, I actually was not able to get back to him, but he was concerned that his property was being rezoned, which is not the case. Uh, he lives south of the property being rezoned and was circulated because he's within a certain distance from that property, uh, but there is in no way anything happening to his property that's directly affecting it. Uh, we tried on numerous occasions to give him a call, but we unfortunately couldn't get a hold of him. Chris Beeson, uh, I think we talked to him as well as the representatives from the mine had spoken to him. I'm concerned about the noise in the ancillary structures of equipment. Uh, I was curious about what uh, ancillary structures would be placed on the property adjacent to Goldthorpe Road. We did get back to him. He did specify whether it would be possible to have a noise reduction fence erected along the highway behind the dwellings, just to try and prevent sound. Um, from an MOACC standpoint, they are meeting the requirements for noise abatement, and that this should not be a requirement that they'll need to do. I mean, if MOACC deems it uh, necessary, they can make that recommendation at the noise abatement stage. Jesse Siebert, also concerned about Goldthorpe Road. Uh, again, not closing, so we're good. Um, Barry Ray, uh, he was objecting to having this in his neighborhood and concerned about the level of noise that it'll generate. Uh, that was addressed through the noise and uh, air quality study. And Cynthia, and we unfortunately didn't get her last name, but she's a daughter of an older property on Goldthorpe. And her concerns lied more more essentially with the, the fact that the process was very quick. So she felt that in the last three months, there's lots that has been going on and she's wondering how we could slow it down a bit because it was a lot for her mother to take. So that was the uh, correspondence that we had received. Uh, we did actually, there was a few um, MTO and ONR, these were two that I wanted to reach out to individually to ensure that there was not gonna be any issues. So they never got back to us when we sent our notice of public meeting to see if they had any comments. So we actually called them and asked them whether or not they had any concerns. MTO mentioned that if they were building within 45 minutes, 45 meters of the property line, they would need a building and land use permit. So um, they'll have to be in communication with them just to be sure that they're meeting that requirement. ONR had no concerns and I was actually grateful enough to receive quite a bit of correspondence from Kale Gold regarding their correspondence with them. So there's no concern there. We also, um, Tried to reach out to the snow drifters. There was no issues. There's no effects to the trails. So there's n no issues there. Uh, they're also working with private, um, working privately with other ministries and First Nations as part of the closure plan. So those issues and concerns will be taken into account there as well. So in terms of the planning advisory committee, uh, we ended up meeting on February 22nd, so last Thursday, and I did try to address the concerns that were that were brought up. Uh, they were concerned about the impact on surrounding property owners. But as I'd mentioned previously, the study took into account all potential impacts, which has been peer reviewed and agreed upon that it will meet the minimum requirements of MOACC. The reduction in setback not being applied to the entire property. So this was something that came up after the fact. Uh, right now, the way the notice is worded, it sort of sounds like we are reducing the setback from 100 meters to 33 meters for the entire claim. Uh, that's not, that wasn't really our intent. It was to reduce it for the purpose of the shaft and the ancillary structures. So we've I've revised the bylaw for next council to just include the two mining claims for developments taking place. Uh, and then the opportunity to keep a vegetative buffer between the mine and the residential neighborhoods of Goldthorpe and Chappie Hughes. The vegetative buffer is actually owned by Kale Gold. So as part of the site plan control agreement, a recommendation would be to ensure that that stays vegetated. So in terms of the recommendations made by planning advisory committee, and I also fully agree with these recommendations to move forward to council. Um, is to approve the official plan amendment and the rezoning applications. Uh, official plan amendment would be that one mining claim, uh, 1617, to go from rural to industrial. And then the zoning bylaw amendments, the, the whole property going from rural to mineral extraction and disposal. And that was to recommend approval on both of those. So at this point, um, I can take questions from council. I do have representatives from Kale Gold here, so if I'm not able to answer, I will ask them to come up and, and ask any questions or answer, sorry. Councillor Kiley. Yeah, Ashley, uh, in case I missed, yeah. missed it, you were talking fairly fast. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the uh, noise fence, uh, what was the reaction from Kale Gold? 
if that's a possibility of doing? I never brought it up with Kale Gold. Uh, I don't know if they want to, do you want to comment on that now or? As part of um, our requirements, we wouldn't need it. Uh, and the study would have, in my opinion, the study would have put that as an option for noise abatement if it was necessary, but it wasn't deemed necessary to do any more. So they were meeting those MECC requirements without a noise fence. So to I, impose I that on I think them. it's not a bad idea, and not just from noise, uh, to keep the noise down, but also from, as you drive by, it'll, Kind of hide the project back. So, mm -hmm. just my own thoughts. Yep. You can comment, yeah, sure. Yeah. Council, um, as Ashley was mentioning, we did a comprehensive noise and air study, and um, for the particular area that is being mentioned for the noise fence. Um, the noise models demonstrate that that area, that particular area um, along the government road is not impacting the noise. It's below the 40 decibel, well below. Uh, the dispersion models that we've done show no impact not so whatsoever. And it, to the point where the Doppler effect of those noise models don't even register in that area. So at this point, uh, we haven't made any plans to put a noise fence. However, we are still doing ongoing data refinement. We're going to be putting some noise modeling in actual data sensors in those areas. And if it, there's deemed to be any kind of noise uh, impacts, then we will explore dampeners, um, fences, and anything like that. But at this time, based on the model, um, there, we didn't see a requirement. But. Um, uh, and speaking on behalf of Kirk Lake Gold, we're continuing doing modeling there. We haven't stopped the noise modeling is our position. So you're not ruling, you're not ruling it out. It just at this point, it's... At this point, we didn't see a need for it because the noise models show no impact whatsoever. However, we have um, um, brought in some noise monitoring equipment that we'd like to set up. And just because of the weather, the noise modeling experts said that the instrumentation doesn't work well in the yeah. January, February. So as soon as that, the weather, the way it is today, we think um, we can get someone in and start doing some more continuous to get some more refinement to those models. And if we see, our intention is to meet all compliance at any given time. So in the event that there are parts where we are exceeding, rest assured we will make sure it's dampened. I, I guess the other reason why it is sort of the good neighbor policy, uh, some people are concerned as, as noted, but uh, I don't know if it's that big of a cost, that type of offense, to be quite honest with you. So that's noted uh, the noise uh, prevention fence. It's a good suggestion, uh, Councillor Patrick Kelly. We'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll work with the team and we haven't ruled anything out. We are still doing a lot of modeling to refine the data and you know, working with the city to ensure that we're maintaining that good neighbor policy. Yeah. I'm saying if it's not a big expense, I would, even though you may not be mandated to do it, I would think it's a good consideration, as I mentioned, as a good neighbor policy. Sure. That's, my, that's my opinion anyway. Okay, I'll take it back to the team to have more look into that to make sure it's in the right area, et cetera. To just to follow up with that, if all of a sudden there was some sort of uh, sound recognized in that area, MOACC would get involved with that noise abatement program and perhaps make that recommendation to them as well. So they'll ensure that MOACC is keeping them in check with those minimum guidelines. And they do periodic inspections and they come quite mm -hmm. regularly. I suspect it'll be more than a recommendation on MOECC's part. <laughs> so yeah. uh, if... Uh, and, and that's, I think, what swayed the uh, Planning Advisory Committee was that, uh, and certainly, you know, further with Ashley's memo this morning, the fact that MOECC is, is the um, police in this regard, uh, they have a lot sharper teeth than what the municipality has. And, uh, you know, I, I'm that much more comfortable now that uh, all of those concerns are going to be, are going to be met. And... Uh, 
I'm I'm 100% in favor of this. And and uh, you mentioned about the um, you know visuals. Um, quite frankly, and I've told this to several people, I think that uh, having this where it's located is going to be such a tremendous advertising opportunity for the municipality and showing you know the progress and the activity and whatnot going on in the municipality that uh, I really like this idea and I'm 100% behind it. I mean, and I'm just trying to think, Ashley, was there any, I mean, as far as the other item that um, uh, came up was, you know, there was a concern about the um, um, adjacent residential areas, and there's a very significant buffer between any activity uh, to do with this new project and the uh, existing residential areas. And uh, again, we're very comfortable that that's is going to remain and, and be uh, uh, respected. So, <clears throat> Ashley, I just uh, are there any uh, resident are there any properties in the area homes that are going to be affected by this by this rezoning? Uh, Based on the study, no. No, no, not by potential, but by actual that their their zoning is changing. Oh no. So there's no, nobody, it's just there's nobody properties changing. that are changing. We're just changing from rural to, an, to mining or mining yeah. industrial. And only their properties, yeah. yeah. And it, it's so strange, you know, for years and years, everybody really hopes that, as Todd, <coughs> as Councilor Morgan noted, that things like this is gonna happen. And, <clears throat> and even when great things happen, uh, they bring up challenges and, and, and concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, but I too, uh, I, I'm very satisfied that uh, the, the, the mine has done all the studies. I, I'm very pleased that uh, they cooperated and had a, uh, uh, a peer review, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, even more uh, encouraging. Um, I, I, I'm also hearing that, that while all the studies show that everything's gonna be fine, if, if anything gets off kilter, that there's gonna be action taken that, mm -hmm. that will satisfy to get it back on track because the policing will be much more stricter than if the yeah. municipality was, was looking at it. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm I'm excited about this uh, uh, about this rezoning because that means that uh, we are finally getting that that uh, that great development that we've been trying for for several several years here, and uh, but I think people understand, especially those coming. We haven't had any development here, so we haven't had any, any hardly disruption. But development means some disruption, and uh, you know uh, whether it's the piling noises people complained about at the pool or, or whatever the development is. But development is going to be, uh, create some, <coughs> some situations at time that people aren't happy, even mm -hmm. whether it's, uh, whether it's uh, traffic or, or what it be. But, but the, the outcome of this is going to be tremendous to the whole community. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, just to add the, the years on to the life of the mine, is that's what the community is. We won't have a community if we don't have that. So while there is going to be some disruption, um, it's going to be good disruption, and I, I'm looking forward to it. And I certainly uh, uh, back this uh, as well. Okay. Yeah, Tony, just to clarify, do I do support this change. Oh, certainly. I just think the fence isn't a bad idea for, yep. for further consideration. I certainly wouldn't vote against it because of the right. fence, no. put it no. that way. So it's just something I would like to be considered. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I just, I just have okay. to ask if there's questions from the public. Well, well. I was going to say, oh, okay, actually, perfect. I was going to ask that I thought you were going to Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh, whoever, uh, come on up. Uh, uh, st again, state your name and your address, and uh, the microphone's yours. Good afternoon, Your Worship uh, Council. Uh, my name's Chris Beeson, and I own three residential properties in Chappie Hughes. I own 606 and 610 Government Road West. And those are the properties that I ha have a concern. Um, I fully support this project. I think, it's, I think it's very exciting for Kirkland Lake and the best thing to happen in many years. So I'm not here to complain in any way, but I do have a concern about noise because my two properties, 606 Government Road West and 610 Government Road West, back on to the highway 
and they're directly across the highway from the uh, proposed ancillary structures and we don't really know what they are um, and there is no natural barrier between these pro properties and the proposed ancillary structures there's no forest or, or rock outcrops it's just backyard and highway and then the area of proposed ancillary structures so my concern is noise and uh, mining can be noisy, it's noisy. So uh, right now, maybe it's planned to have a dry or a parking lot, but mining is very dynamic. Things change. A few years down the road, we may need, they may need uh, a shop there to, to repair uh, equipment, heavy equipment. They uh, may need a paste plant crusher, whatever. So, so whatever they need, they're going to build, and, and that's good. But it's going to affect my properties in a way that <coughs> it affects the backyard, which I think the province refers to as an outdoor living area. So if my properties, the front of my properties were facing these proposed ancillary structures, I would not be here. But an outdoor living area is generally the backyard of a, pro a residential property and it's an area where people go at the end of their day to relax and spend quality time with their families. So I, I'm not all, all a lot concerned about the noise of the shaft, I just the proposed ancillary structures and activity that happens there. Mining is dangerous so we, uh, mining companies install backup alarms on all their equipment. So my, mines don't sleep. They operate 24 seven, holidays, whatever. They're still working. So what we're gonna hear, uh, what I think we, I'm going to, people in the, the outdoor living areas of 606 and 610 are going to hear are beep, 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 beep. These kind of things. Mining companies, and rightly so, have to have these alarms loud enough so that other people working in the, at the mine in areas where there is loud machinery operating have to be able to hear these backup alarms. So that's just one example of uh, noise that, that could possibly affect people living, uh, trying to enjoy their outdoor living areas on these, on these two uh, properties. So it, it's just a concern. I don't, I, I don't have a complaint, like I say, but uh, I think it's a legitimate concern. And uh, so I, I didn't want to come before council without offering some sort of solution. So I'm not an engineer, but I thought I saw on the side of highways here and there throughout the province, you see these fences between highways between uh, other industry and whatnot and development, subdivision and developments that are, their purpose is to reduce noise in the, in the subdivisions. So as, as my solution that I offered that, but of course engineers may figure a berm, you know, just a waste rock or, or, or whatever it's, but I just wanted my, I, I felt that because of this letter that I received that I would not have any further uh, source of appeal or, or, or any, any further uh, recourse if I didn't come here today so that my concerns were recorded and that this council and everybody was aware that it was the outdoor living areas of these two properties that were be, gonna be affected by, uh, by noise. So that, that that's why my, my concerns, I, I put them forth, so. Thank you, Chris. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So just to follow up on that, that's a perfect example of when an OACC would get involved with that noise abatement. So anytime there's any changes to the site, they wouldn't come to us necessarily unless there was a need for reduction in setback, which would be through a minor variance process. 
If it didn't go through that and didn't require any update to our site plan control agreement, uh, any concerns regarding noise changes would be through that noise abatement program with MOECC. Okay, thank you. Councillor Morgan. I just want to uh, reiterate that that actually, it was Chris's properties that uh, the planning advisory committee was most concerned about. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spent a lot of time discussing and, uh, and looking at you know, the, the impact, the potential solutions, and all the rest of it. And uh, so it, it certainly wasn't something that we glossed over. It was a big part of our, uh, of our discussion. And, uh, and, and I think you know, Ashley's addressed it, but just to reiterate, uh, MOECC you know, takes these things very seriously. And uh, you know, if, if the numbers aren't where they need to be, then they'll be making recommendations. <laughs> Please, is there anybody else from the audience that would like to come up? Come on up and state your name and address, and you're more than welcome. <coughs> My name is Martin Pasco. I live at uh, 582 Government Road West. If I understand right, the shaft's going to be collared uh, within 100 meters of uh, Goldthorpe Road. Is that correct? Um, I can't answer that. But. 582. Sorry, up here. It's a Kale Gold can answer, but I don't think it's within 100 meters of Goldthorpe Road. The shaft's not a hundred. No. No, it'll be on Highway 66, then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's going to be. Sorry, I'm trying to zoom out. It's going to be right here. Okay. Yeah, so we're about. Right now, the back of my property um, um, sits on Highway 66 in the front on Government Road. Mm -hmm. uh, the way things are set up now, um, I'm sort of fortunate I can leave my ears in my dresser drawer. But uh, even now, we can hear uh, when they muck it. The mine has to um, crush and haul ore at night because maintenance has to be done during the day. And um, if this is this shaft project, is that going to bring the, the noise closer to shaft use and what it is now? Yeah. In terms of the so the study is outlining that there shouldn't be any impact note. Yeah, we'll get Mohammed to. But there shouldn't be. Throw my mic. Be. Yeah, by all means. Um, and my colleagues can jump in to help if I. So our intention right now. I need to use the. Can you drive uh -oh. for me? What did you do? So I know. <laughs> That's why I stay away from maps. I think. So our intention right now, while Ashley's finding the map, our shaft is going to be going in the location which is. Can you speak up? Oh, sorry. Use your mic. Yeah. Oh, my mic. Hello. Can you hear me now? Okay, so where the arrow is hovering now, that's the proposed location of the shaft. And all other material, crushing, et cetera, will be done at the existing same location. There's no change to our mill operations or any, so, uh, any other operation whatsoever. The only operation is that existing shaft that will be here. All the traffic and truck will be brought in through our number three shaft entrance, so it will not be coming in at all from here, so there shouldn't be any traffic-related disturbances here any more than you have today. I realize that, but with the increase in production, you're going to have to increase your crushing hours? Um, our crushing hours? No. What do you mean, no? I realize that, but if you increase the tonnage, you have to increase the amount crushed. The amount being crushed, but not the operation of the mill. The mill will be the operation of the That makes sense, but you're still going to be crushing longer than you are right now. So we're going to add to the crushing station. So the number of hours, as I was first saying, it's not going to change. You're going to expand the crushing plant. The crushing plant is going to change. What's that going to do on our noise level in Chap Hughes? From the mill to Chap Hughes, I will not see any difference there. Now, as Mohammed explained a little bit earlier, we are going to continue monitoring for noise. And if we see that we're getting close or C 
exceeding the limit, then we will propose the attitude in national capital. But right now, the modeling that we have is not showing that. Um, where is a new tailings uh, project going to be located? Uh, compared to my address or Chapman Hughes? Yeah. On the other side of the ONR line? Yeah. yeah. Towards the Amakugami? Um, yeah. East of the Amakugami? Yeah. North of our current tailings line. Okay. Uh, what's that going to do for tailings lines uh, from the existing mill? Um, is there going to be more danger to the environment uh, if one of those lines break? So there's been extensive environmental studies done to ensure nothing breaks, of course. However, there are culverts and ditches that'll be there to have the collection of any kind of containment that doesn't leave the property at all. Uh, we're fortunate that the tailing storage facility that's located up there is considered an offline structure. We don't impact any water bodies or touch water bodies or any fish and fish habitat. So uh, we're fortunate that we have a location that uh, minimizes any kind of environmental footprint. Right now, your discharge goes into the Amazon Creek, your final discharge. Uh, no. From your water treatment plant. Our water treatment plant. Or the clean water's discharge there. The clean water discharge, oh. Um, and, and it meets all the, some of the strictest provincial water qualities. Yes, the, but during the summer, you've had to shut down because your levels were... Um, too high to discharge into Amakugami. Well, they're, they're getting uh, they're getting there. No, no, we've never had any exceedances at our. Not exceedances, our, but you you have to shut down when you <coughs> come within the full. We always continuously discharge into Amakugami Creek. So uh, what you may be thinking of is mine water, yes, but I'm talking about mill water. you reach the upper parameter, though the, the plant has to be shut down now. Yes, but we don't reach the, we don't reach any level. Where you don't discharge anything into the We don't run the, the effluent treatment facility on site. But we do continuously discharge clean effluent water. Yes, from water the system. underground, from the mine water, yes. Correct, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the way, the way it is there now. Are no, there are no exceedances or no non-compliances with our effluent revenue stream. The way uh, it's set up now is you have, um, a dam discharging into uh, the uh, effluent plant, and then that goes into a copper pond or a uh, C1, I believe they call it, or not sure. Pardon? Pawson pond. Um, your heavies, are, you have to, a couple times a year, that's emptied and, mm -hmm. and shoveled out and entered into the tailings. Yep. So, uh, What's the new tailings area um, going to do to the discharge towards the Amakugami now that you're moving east and north? So there's going to be no change to our water management or effluent strategy. The only difference is the tailings facility is going to be located further to the north, and all the water is going to be brought down into our current water management system. So all effluent, all runoff is going to go into our conditioning pond, and it's going to follow the same circuit that it does now. Okay. Uh, no doubt it'll need to be expanded? No, there's no plans at present time to be changing or expanding our water management system in any way. Right now it's sufficient and it meets our requirements, so there are no plans for that at present time. I can see in the future that changing. It could. I mean, I'm not going to go on record and say we're not going to change anything, right? That's No, no. That's but I mean, absolutely. Um, but one of the things that we are looking at as part of our strategy is Well, that's good. Um, the other thing is uh, the new tailing site should um, affect the dust levels going into Chaffee's less, which I'm happy with. Yes, yeah, so because it is going to be farther away from receptors. Yeah. Um, however, our best management 
management practice plan will not be changing. We are still very actively in it trying to manage that. So we were doing some, so everything we do now with calcium chloride and putting down hay and watering, all that is still going to be in place. So we're not going to be. I was lucky enough to have a Dutch monitor on my property, so <laughs> I'm familiar with that aspect. Of yeah. Well, I think it's going to be great. Uh, people are not going to believe the amount of change that's going to come. The spin-off industry. Um, yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. And we're, we're already starting to see some of that spin-off in, uh, industry coming in. I'm Dan Nado. I live at 816 Government Road West. I'm at the other end of Shappy. Um, oh, we'll, we'll talk right into it. <laughs> okay, I'm at 816 Government Road West at the other end of uh, Shappy. Um, my concern is the noise mostly. Um, at the current time uh, in the evening at, or at night, I can hear the crusher. I can, they, in the past few months, they've been working on tailings and rearranging things. I've, all night we hear the, uh, the tractors and the, the trucks beeping and so on. Uh, so I just wanted to say that my, my concern basically is noise, uh, the extra activity, and uh, hopefully it won't get any worse. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public that would like to uh, come up? Mike Boutin, 788 Government Road. Uh, I'm just concerned about the noise too. Like I've been hearing that noise for years and I can even hear stuff in my basement. <laughs> like, and that's just my concern about the noise. If it's gonna be louder when they build that because uh, of how close it's gonna be. And, you know. Okay, that's been a common, yeah, the noise is uh, certainly something we, we, we've heard. Uh, yeah, I've been we've, hearing we've heard that tonight. for uh, 40 years, you know. <laughs> but anyways, that's all I gotta say. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we're going to read a resolution here. It's moved by Councillor Barker, seconded by Councillor Morgan. The Council approves the official plan amendment application number one and the zoning application number 25 as presented and directs the town planner to bring forward bylaws for consideration at the meeting of March 6, 2018. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Okay. Item five. It's moved by Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Barker. The Council adjourns its public meeting of February 27, 2018 to an in-camera meeting to discuss one possible land sale issue. All in favor? It's carried, thank you. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>